The, new, the Gimbal Boys are back with a new Gimbal offering. Get your four Gimbals free for the price of a Timble. <laughs> The spirit of Massachusetts, it's the spirit of America. Is, is that from Family it's Guy? A, what's old and what's new? Yeah, it is from Family Guy. It's no, the wait, spirit it's of Mass. I still haven't made my masterpiece. No, it's not Massachusetts. It's somewhere else. It's no, it's, you're right. They go on vacation somewhere, don't they? It's Massachusetts. There's no way but it's that's not where they Massachusetts. Live. Ro Rhode Island, Massachusetts. No, it's oh Rhode no, you're right. They are in Rhode Island. So Ma okay, that that is right. I don't know why I was thinking they were in the spirit of and 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 it's not Massachusetts. It's, it's so the I was wrong. But no, no, yeah, because it's the city of Massachusetts. It's the spirit no, it's of not. America. It, no, it's that the, sounds even worse. No, Hold it's on. yeah. You were right this whole time, and you're questioning yourself. The oh my God, America. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is the spirit of Massachusetts. You ready oh, to do I'm this? ready, sir. Oh, do you have notes? Hold on, I gotta grab my notes. I didn't take many. I didn't take many. Uh, this might be one of the most amount of notes I've taken. Oh, really? All right. Yep. To be fair, it is my second time watching. So it's it's harder to take notes when it's your second time watching. I feel like notes really just kind of become analytical things or like where you're like, ooh, well, what does that mean? Or what is it? Because you've already mm -hmm. seen it. So notes... It's not like you're going to be like, well, what is yeah. this character doing? You know? Yeah, watching it the first time around is always going to be heavier on the note side. Yeah, you're usually yeah. just pointing out, oh, things I didn't catch the first time around, or oh, if you notice this. Exactly. That's because I don't have much, especially near the end. I just have mostly near the beginning, and it's just stuff that I noticed about the movie. But uh, before we get into it, hello, welcome to the Neon Valley Media Club. Hey, hey, hey. This is the show where one of us suggests a movie to the other person that they've never seen. And we all ask you to watch it along with us and have a conversation. Yes. And last week, I suggested the movie Saltburn. Saltburn. I searched Salt Bomb just now when I was trying to pull up the movie details and I got very confused for a second. I was like, this isn't <laughs> correct. I And for anybody listening that... Uh, has listened to prior episodes, we will talk a bit about Dagashi Kashi at the end of this yes. episode. We're going to do we a bit of a catch up. Uh, I still didn't finish it. I'm sorry. Still, okay. I watched I, can, four more jo episodes, okay? Don't I play the clip. Don't, don't play the, play the clip. So this won't be like, we're not going to talk about them every two episodes or something like yeah, that. It's not going to take like a month or two in order for yeah. us to get through. Uh... Yeah, no, don't worry. Even though it's taken me a month or two. <laughs> No, I don't think it'll take me a month to watch this. <laughs> I listen, I know what I said. But I it's not what I meant. It's not what I meant, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You've you've had a mom. <laughs> you've heard it before. Yeah. Alright. So I suggested Saltburn. When I suggested it, you you seemed to have known nothing about it. Like Zero. At all. Which, Even when I started watching it, I I never read the summary. I try not oh. to look at the actors. I always just try to go into it and beautiful, amazing. Because this, I think this is one of the movies that kind of thrives with you not knowing anything going into it. It's mm -hmm. very interesting in that way. I knew a little bit when I first was introduced to it. I had seen mm -hmm. the trailer first off, and then there was a clip or two going around on TikTok that I had seen oh, okay. and was like, oh, okay. Like, maybe I'll watch it. All right. So we are going to give our rating for Saltburn. This is our initial rating. At the end of our conversation, that might affect it. Get a little bit more insight. But uh, you ready to do this? Yeah, I'm, do I'm, I'm down. Okay. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, two, one. one. Seven out of 10. Holy shit, a one? You homophobe. Who the fuck do you think you... What the fuck did you... Rec it's two hours. Nothing makes any goddamn sense. It makes it's all the so sense predictable. in the world. It's not then, predictable. So you're telling me in the first half an hour of that movie, you didn't think it was just like a coming of age? Like, oh, this is like a perks of being a wallflower. He's just finding himself in college kind of movie. And then... So... 
I knew something was wrong the second he ba- he dipped out on his friend. That that guy that he made that was nice to him. But really? well, it wasn't necessarily nice. Which at my first note was I think I actually like this cinematography, so that's why it got a one. Yeah, four by because three. I thought the the filming was done really well. But like my first note was Harry Potter vibes, uh long tables, and then a red headed friend. <laughs> which Harry Potter but is brought up in the movie. What you yeah, that, that was actually funny. Uh <laughs> but when he's like at the bar and then immediately it's just like Ah, fuck him. I was like, that's not sincere. I there's something there's something off. Like someone in that position would not just pull that shit. I don't uh, know. I, uh, I, it was it was so quick of a turnaround. I don't for, agree. Like, this this nerdy shy guy. At I least don't in necessarily movie agree. Theater, like I, I only because. I mean, I was right. Is all I'm saying. Oh well, yeah, of I course. Immediate... Like he, there was an ulterior motive at the end of the day. Um, so clearly there is more to it, which is kind of the point. I mean, if you had that vibe of like, well, why would he, you wouldn't do that to somebody. There's that. But also you have to think about like the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world, right? Like the, like social network, things like that, where there are just kind of people who just don't like, I wouldn't say sociopaths, but I'm not calling Mark Zuckerberg a sociopath, by the way. That's what I'm saying, but I'm saying like, maybe he is, but like just people who just don't give a like it, well because i'm gonna be honest too like that character we're talking about the nerdy character I, I, i'm assuming people who are listening to this you've seen the movie i'm hoping because we've already dived into like 30 minutes into the movie but yeah uh the nerdy character he's so unlikable and so aggressive that i actually kind of would believe someone just like not being their friend at the drop of a hat, you know, like, because I feel like I've known people like that in my life and have just kind of been like, okay, I'm never talking to you again. You know, like, it's like you might have a nice interaction at school or the, and then you're just like, oh, no, sorry, you're too aggressive. You're you clearly have social misunderstandings that you need to get through that I can't help you with that. Like, I, I just didn't feel like I was like, nah, I didn't find that unrealistic, but you were correct. It's not like you weren't right in the situation. Yeah. I think it because of the clips that I had seen that I knew this movie, especially from the trailer itself, gives it a bit of a darker tone. So it's almost like, you know, something is going to happen. I kind of wish the trailer didn't do that. I wish the trailer was more of a coming to age kind of story. Exactly. Trick me into thinking it's like a perks of being a wallflower style like I feel like it's a fake A24 movie because it's published by MGM, I believe. And um, A24 is kind of known for that brooding, dark, cinematic, indie, slow, you know, like drama, but also horror, scary, but not really. Like, you know, that type of feel. And this kind of felt like MGM trying to cash in on A24's thing, you know? Mm. I just kind of think they did it well. I just don't think they did it very bad. Like, I love the cinematography in this movie. I love the acting. Like, the acting is fucking unreal. The main character, uh, Cohen? What's what's his name? Barry Cohen. Cohen, yeah, yeah, Barry Cohen. Uh, great. He's incredible. I think he does a great job at like conveying innocent while also not knowing if there's malevolence behind it. Like, I don't know. I liked it, but it seems like you didn't. So let's, let's get into that a little bit more. Why don't, why don't we go over some of your notes? What, how did you, what what, do you So part of it was, was the pacing. It's a long Mm. movie and a lot of scenes you could entirely cut out. And I don't think it would affect it. Like one, and, and maybe this is just something that they, do on the other side of the pond where in schools you and one other student sit with a teacher and 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 go over poems i i I had i think that was meant to be a tutoring session or like a uh that kid's a super genius so why is he being tutored that was his whole thing well no because well no because when you're in when you're in i believe when you're in like higher level 
college classes, don't you meet one on one with professors to go over your like thesis? And your... I've never done that. I mean, maybe, but again, I feel they're like not, Audrey has. Not, like, but uh, like Audrey's already getting a doctor's. These he was freshman in college, wasn't he? Like he's. Yeah, but isn't it like a prestigious? Like the whole point of it oh, is. Oh yeah, that I mean, like it is. It is Oxford. Oxford, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, like maybe that I. Because, yeah, I don't know the ins and outs of it all. I just assumed it was yeah. either like a tutoring thing or like a because, yeah, maybe this course only has two students, which, again, if it's only them, those two, that could feed into the fact that they're the outliers of this posh family, like Farley and Oliver. They are the people who aren't necessarily meant to be part of that house, but are brought into it, you know? So it could almost kind of be a commentary on that, where it's like, even in the schooling, they're in a classroom that doesn't have any of the other... I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to make... I'm I'm making... Inspired. Superfluous. Yeah, well, okay. Go back and watch the Willy's Wonderland episode and tell me what we're At least that knows what it was. Did it. Oh, and this doesn't. So, all right. Uh, so wait, So then what did you think this was? No, as, as you got into it, like... Uh, how did you feel like the first few scenes like going in it? Like, I so will admit initially, the pacing is a little slow. I will admit. Yeah, it, it was slow and I it literally just sounded like regular conversation and not like movie conversation. Like, it, it wasn't anything where I was like, like learning that the teacher was once an admirer of Farley's mom in high, like it didn't go anywhere. Like what? No, I I felt myself oftentimes being like, are you, you're literally just adding in scenes and talking about stuff to make it a longer movie, but it's not doing anything to add to the rest of the story. Nor is it uh, a Chuck Norris's gun that comes back later and is is used in some way. Like they they just they they talk about that and then. And it's not even a part of like the character. It's not his mother is never. The I movie. disagree. I, I disagree. I because I think. Farley's character is meant to represent someone who doesn't belong in the higher class, but they are related and or connected to someone who is. So they are kind of like an inherent like spectator, like they get to be there just because they were born into it. And that scene of the teacher being like, I knew your mother, I'm a good friend, is that way of making it where it's like, well, now the teacher has more of a connection with him, even though he has not proved anything mm -hmm. for you know so it's like the teacher already sees farley more competently and more favorably over oliver even though farley has shown up late clearly didn't do the work mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter because his mom was friends with the professor and has a favorable sense and that kind of feeds into the themes of the movie i mean the movie's a an eat the rich movie at the end of the day it's a like tear down the elite essentially um it's a person who is born into kind of mediocrity mid-tier level like poverty like not poverty but like not riches you know literally mm -hmm. like middle class and then they somehow weasel themselves into rich and infamy um and I don't know. I, I like I like this movie a lot. I really do enjoy it. Again, I gave it a seven. That's not that great on my scale of movies. <laughs> I will say a rewatch brought it down. Um, I originally gave this movie an eight, but when I rewatched it, the length, it's you said it's once the movie makes its point, it seems to go on longer than it should. Now, the first time I watched it, I didn't really notice that. Yeah, I felt like it was a little long. But definitely the second time, the, the the last half of the movie does feel like, okay, yeah, wrap it up. Yep. Let's go. You know, it's like drawn out for art's sake, you know? <laughs> and there was a lot of times where I don't think it was mixed well, where I could not hear the conversation because they would kind of talk quite mumble like They're this. They're very British, while a lot of too. Music was playing. They're very British, too. Yeah, like where it's like I had subtitles again. I, I, I am a subtitles boy for this very reason. I think that Hollywood sucks at mixing and also streaming services don't have a great like 
audio compressor and leveler. Mm. So movies don't always come out great. I've noticed on Amazon that happens a lot. Yep. Um, so yeah, I always listen to subtitles. So I didn't have that problem, but you again- You always listen to subtitles. You know what I mean? I could tell right. there were moments where it's like, especially how British they are and how quiet it would get, be like, and it's like, oh, and, I didn't. I and didn't that's probably that. one thing I can at least give it is, I think when they try to use humor in it, it was very dry. And I, like, it, like there wasn't any time where I was like, oh, that's a pretty good line. Like, I felt like people are either being, and not to say the acting was bad, but that the story had characters acting so outlandishly that I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Or just so dry where I was like, I, I don't, I don't know what to do I, with this. Like, it's I, not like, oh, that was, that was a good line. Couple lines that are good. I, I, I mean, like, well, again, like you said, maybe it's more about the character interactions. It's not necessarily about the line being good. It's about like, mm -hmm. oh, that's funny because, because um, the mother's uh, Elspeth when she's out in the yard later in the movie and uh one of the characters dies the the one with red hair that they forced out of the house because oliver mm -hmm. kind of drops these little hints of like she could be lying about it which we'll get into and stuff but in that scene she's like oh yeah well we're going to her funeral and oliver's like wait she died and she's like yeah she'll do anything for attention that's fucking hilarious. Like, especially just for what her, who her character is and like what, and it's also because they never said she committed suicide, but that line tells you she committed suicide. It's like, I love that kind of writing. And yeah, that's the character I'm talking about. It's like the, the one that they keep trying to push out of the house. I can't remember. I think it's Angela, but I can't remember. I, but I, I remember, I, I remember the character you're referring to. Let's kind of do our normal thing. We go through the plot of the movie. Okay. All right. We've been talking about it a lot already, which I like this. I like this repertoire. I didn't know how you would feel about this movie. I was 50-50. And this is literally one of the ends that I thought you might be on. So it's totally fine. But uh, I want to talk more about it. So, okay. Movie opens. We start on just Oliver showing up at the college, right? Well, well no, at first it's a monologue. And he talks about how he never really loved him, but he, he did love which, him. Which, again... They, but it wasn't in they love tell with you him. from the beginning that things don't work out. Whatever is going to happen in this movie doesn't work out for the character that they're showing. And then they showed Felix. Does it not work out in the sense that they just broke up and never talked again? Because, like, again, it's like a coming of age movie. Is it like, oh, they, oh, yeah. they, and, and that's they not were to never say friends? I knew, you know? Yeah, that, that's not to say I knew it was going to be at that level. But I was like, okay, so whatever is happening in this movie doesn't work out. But I had a feeling it had to do with him and Felix. Like, I was like, okay, so maybe there's a relationship yeah. going on there. Whatever happens, it doesn't work out. I don't think that's an inherent bad thing, though. I mean, that's kind of like a... Uh, that's a... Uh, that's, that's my personal... Hitchcock. I don't like when movies give you the ending. Mm, really? And I guess it's it's not fully the ending, but I've I've never liked when, like, a movie starts with Mitch Woodward, how I got here. And not to say, like, when they always say that... But I, I know the mean. only one that I, th I thought did well was the uh, eternal sunshine of the spotless mm. mind. Yeah, but it did. They it never invertly. actually say yeah. it. Yeah, it, it invert. But again, because it's not just like a monologue over like short bits of people we haven't met. I was like, OK, so this is trying to lead me to understand that something that is to come. Mm. And I'm like, just do it with the movie. <laughs> I I I get what you're saying. I just think that I it leaves like enough at the beginning for me to wonder what happened. You know, it's like it's like yes, it's showing you what happens. Bad things happen. People are collapsed. There's he's saying like oh and all this shit. But What's interesting is like, how, why, what were the human interactions that led to this moment? What, and I think that's more of what the movie's trying to go for is like, not necessarily that exactly, but that's what the intro is meant to do. It's like meant to make you go like, okay, but why, why are all these things happening? You know what? And if you're inherently just not interested in that from the get go, yeah, then you won't be. 
But for me, it was interesting because it felt like I'll even say from like a romantic standpoint, they don't really make it clear whether or not it's a friendship or a love interest or, you know, like they don't. So even from the kind of like straight and gay angle, I'm interested to be like, okay, well, where's this going from that? Is, is this like- You didn't like think a, it was going to be that like they were in love? Well, I did kind of feel like, I, I the most I thought was maybe like, he was in love with him, but he's not gay. So like they had- a, Oh, interesting. I, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. I, I somehow, and, and again, this is where I don't know if, if you've just trained me to pick up on things in movies, but I, I had a feeling I was like, okay, they're a couple. Like, I don't know. It, it was just like, the, and they never the really do end up at all being a couple. No, but they they are very close, and they clearly have had relations. No, there was one scene where it's a flashback, and he's laying shirtless next to Felix in bed, smoking a cigarette, and Felix is asleep. No, that was Farley, wasn't it? Not in the. This was, I think, a flashback to the dorm. I don't think there's Because I remember any... the scene with Farley in the morning. Yeah, but there's yeah, one, yeah, There's one point where I, I think it's towards the end because he's thinking about, like, he's, like, recalling the memories of meeting him and, and seeing him. And Maybe. one of the times they're laying in bed together, and that's what... I'm, I am I might be wrong. It might be someone else. Yeah, I just it, feel like it's never explicitly shown or told that those two specifically like hook up um yeah no i don't i don't even know because they never, never even like even they, up until the end they never like kiss they never like on camera on like maybe no it's, yeah i could be wrong that maybe they do show something that implies something earlier but yeah i didn't because because i think the whole idea is that he's above him you know like it, i i think like the implication is that he's using Oliver's character as a way to make himself feel better for being rich. You know, like, at the same time as being genuine and, like, yes, kind of, like, caring about Oliver, he also needs to make himself feel better about being a rich tyrant. You know what really? I mean? Really? I didn't get that from him. Yeah, I because, like, I, I mean, even though they don't show it, you also have to imply from other things that are happening around him who are Felix's other friends. You know, like he doesn't have any. Exactly. So all the other people have been cast out of his life. He's he must be an asshole. He, like he's a rich douchebag who uses people, brings them into his life, and then cast. Oh, like, Felix. Felix, I not Felix Oliver. Did I... Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about Oliver. No, because I mean, Farley was friends with him, and then Farley's he his even cousin. mentions. Oh, they're cousins? Yeah. Or brothers. Okay, or like stepbrothers or something like that. Or like they or they knew each other's family or something. Oh, but I, I think thought they're cousins. they were just friends. But they also mentioned how he's had other friends, but they fraternized with his sister before, and then that ruined their friendship. And it's like that would imply that he did have friends, but he's not been able to trust people because people use the people around him. Yeah, and well, it's also shown he's kind of like a womanizer in a way. But again, like also in the sense that women just want to be with him and that yep. like so it's, you know, like, I don't know. I think I, even though the movie isn't outright saying it, and I don't think that this is supposed to be the like cut and dry black and white outcome you should get from it. I think the idea is that like Oliver is essentially infiltrating a rich family who has become so docile in their sense of being and they're so rich and don't give a fuck about anything and they don't care that he's able to manipulate them into essentially taking over their entire like uh what's the word i'm looking for uh a state house and home. A st yeah house no a state essentially literally taking over their entire home um and i like how it's it doesn't do a good job at like I keep dropping my book it doesn't do a good job at really conveying the class differences 
because Oliver still kind of feels like a rich person at the end, even though I mean, he's going to Oxford. Yeah. And even if he got accepted on his scholarship, scholarship. Even, even when it's shown his home life, while his parents might not be like fucking rich, the house is nice. That's a nice and he had house. Good money in his pocket at the, the bar. And they show Which, that. So that was the other problem that I had, too, was he's just an asshole. Like, he's just a bad person at the end of the day. Like, he's no better than they are. And it wasn't even like a a vengeance story of, well, your family, like, had my my father murdered because he spoke out of turn and, and bad consequence. Like, there's mm. nothing that gives me credence where it's like, this is a really awful thing other than he's just a sociopath. Well, they're just terrible people. You know, it's I, like I said, it's like an eat the rich thing. It's like he, he, cause you have to oh, wonder. I thought you said ether rich. I was like, oh, is that like a director? Or oh no. A movie no, style. No, no, it's like, yeah, it's like, because I do wonder when in the movie, I mean, like clearly it's kind of portrayed from when he says the the plan, like when he tells Elspeth at the very end about how his whole plan from the beginning, you know, he popped the tire. Yeah. He meant, but it makes me wonder, was his actual plan from the beginning to take over Saltburn or was it to just be part of their life? Or like, because I wonder when did his plan change? Did it have to change? Like, did it change? I don't know. I thought he was just a sociopath and this is just what he wanted. He picked out one person who he knew was really rich and he was just going to take their life. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, kind of like I don't disagree that he might be a sociopath for sure. But like, yeah, that's kind of the point of the movie is like he he purposely picked this person, obviously, but why they don't really like like you said they don't necessarily explain the revenge part of it if it is revenge it's just more yeah. of you're supposed to treat these people as like terrible rich people <laughs> like a, but but okay so what did they do that was terrible in comparison to him because the movie almost makes it seem like they were really the innocent ones like sure they were docile and they they didn't expect that there could be a threat but like they never show that you know the his father is like doing stuff to children or his mother had murdered like children in the past or like or even like they're they're bad people but he's so much worse it's almost like saying like poor people are evil. well but no but is he worse because all yes. he has but no, but all he, he killed did, them. All he did, no, well, they straight up show him poisoning Felix. He poured he, cocaine into a bottle and then handed it to him. Didn't tell him to drink it. Did, now, was I'm not, it cocaine? It, well, I was. Uh, they didn't say what it was, but I'm assuming it was the vial because then he accuses Farley of saying like, "Well, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be the one accusing someone of something else when you were the one bumping lines from a vial the same night." that yeah i i think he overdosed felix is is because like i don't I, he might have poisoned him i don't they don't really say what it is you know well, I, I mean he he could have poisoned him from uh cocaine but, like overdose again, yeah, exactly yeah but again they he didn't say drink this he just goes i'm gonna be sick and then hands felix the bottle and then walks away again that's still murder i'm not saying he didn't kill him he for sure fucking killed him but what they're implying is that he's just setting them up no it's almost like a the saw like saw villain it's like no letting the people mom, he straight, kill themselves he straight up pulls the tube out and she dies okay, well, well yeah her she's a little different and he kind of implies that he murdered the sister and made it look like a suicide i know because well i don't know because when i i, I did make sure to watch that scene again he only places down the blades next to her tub when she's really drunk and upset and then walks away and then when he comes back later, there's blood everywhere. So Even I, then, his intention was for her to die, and she did. Of course, of course, of course. But my point is, is that what the movie's trying to say is that these rich people don't have to do anything in their life to enjoy the means that they have, right? So this poor, that's the part that they don't do well, is that this poor person came in 
and did just a little bit of work and then was able to take over their entire household. Now, whether this work involved manipulating and literally almost murdering people and literally murdering people, yes, of course, that's it. But the point is that they have become so negligent to what they are possessing, this, this riches that they have, that they don't care enough to resolve themselves or like fix this or to, like he's literally able to stay farley points it out multiple times he's like why the fuck is he here what the fuck is he still doing here you know and that's kind of the he's like a leech but they're so rich they don't fucking they just went like oh well we're helping oliver and like it, it like he's able to infiltrate like i think that's kind of where i enjoy it but even even then it's still saying that poor people will infiltrate and kill rich people. I don't think it's fair to say that they will. I think it's kind of like the parasite. I, I, I don't think um, the Korean movie Parasite. It's about a poorer family who starts working for a richer family and then starts using the means of the richer family when they're not that noticing. That does a good job of establishing how low they are. He isn't yeah. low. Like, that's, that's the thing the is, thing. I, I don't I see any driving force that makes sense for his character other than just being a sociopath. Because other than that, again, it's, it's like the, are we saying that they deserved it? Like, did they deserve to all be murdered? Eh, I don't know. I don't really again, care. Because again, anything... I can't, there's not a single thing the movie shows or implies that shows that them being rich was did, was any worse than anything he did. But was it any better? That's it doesn't thing. have to be better. W why like, not? We're no, not no, saying but that, that. Ah, I disagree though, because they are literally, the point of wealth is that you have millions and millions of dollars. What are you doing with it? it you know what I mean? Are like, they supposed to do something with it? Like what, yes, what, what are like, they supposed to do? Help. Let's do something and that's kind of the point that's made in the movie is that whenever they're given the chance to help they would rather not you know what i mean like they they would ra like yes they would like to make the image that they're helping but they're not helping at any is like even when the girl kills herself they're kind of like good now we don't have to help her anymore like she would do anything for attention anyway you know but is that worse than killing someone <laughs> No, I'm not. Well, no, Oliver is not meant to be a hero. There, it's it's. Well, this is like watch. You're, so it's just okay. So hear me out. This is you arguing. This point is like watching Joker and then going, well, oh, hold on a second. Is Joaquin Phoenix really supposed to be a relatable character here? No, of course not. It's a fucked up movie. But they it's make about that clear. No, but no, but that's what I'm saying is about this movie. That's kind of that twist of like the beginning sets it up like it's this coming of age movie of like the sweet kid who just doesn't know anything but then you find out he's the fucking crazy one that's been fucking manipulating this thing the whole time you know what i mean that that's the part of it that i think is interesting you know i, th I think it's just i think it's an easy cop out everyone sucks so everyone's gonna die and but again i think it portrays the poor people as the worst evil Ah, uh, I don't, I don't necessarily agree. He killed people. <laughs> that That's the point where I'm like, you invalidate them from being worse. But would they have people. ever changed? Would, or would they have just perpetuated the life? Did they, did they need life? to? Like, but, what, but, but, so, but that's the thing is like, you're perpetuating a system of just negligent rich people who just constantly live on their life sending rich more and more rich people to being racist negligent ignorant people to being more racist negligent ignorant people to on and on and on so it's like i'm not saying you should murder these people but i think the point the movie is trying to make is that like without interference that doesn't change without anything to happen these people just go on their lives hoarding millions and millions of dollars but again i don't think oliver's in the right I'm not necessarily trying to say that. I'm now just defending the fact that, like, I don't think that these people dying is that big of a deal. They were kind of assholes. It, like, if this was a horror movie and they were meant to be the people killed by the the serial killer, I would not, I wouldn't even shake a fist at it. I'd be like, oh, good. You know, they, like, all she kept doing was just 
gloating about how other people suck, like as Elspeth, like her literal character was just uh, gossip. That's it. You know what I mean? Which yep. is kind of sad. And that's a character trait that's set up in horror movies. So like, so again, like I'd say for this argument, like if you were to watch a horror movie and someone is set up to be a terrible character and then they die, is it kind of a bad movie because that character, like, do you, have you seen Ready or Not? I don't, I don't know if I've, no, um, damn it. But no, uh, but yeah, so it's like, if there's a character that's like a rich posh character that's meant to be an asshole and then a serial killer murders them in like a slasher movie, is it a bad movie because that, like, or a bad character because the person- It's a horror did, movie. Didn't... The goal is to kill people. But what is this movie? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, see, that's what I mean though. Like, if it, you're it going into like it- It felt like a drama, but, but again, the idea isn't, because this movie is clearly saying something. There's a message behind it. Horror movies aren't necessarily, there's a message behind why. I, I mean, I, even like Jigsaw, you can kind of say, well, it's it's people need to learn a lesson. All right. But if you're saying like, again, the eat the rich. Okay. But if the worst thing that they're doing is, is hoarding money, like, yeah, you could say that's morally wrong. But does it deserve a death sentence? And if that's the case, then the people that kill them, because again, there was no motive where it was like, I'm taking vengeance because you guys, your inaction or action yeah. killed my family. He had a, a good family life with parents that still cared about him. And it was like, well, because again, it, it wasn't even poor, but it's, it's showing people who have less money are worse because they're willing to murder those who have what they want. But I didn't see it as worse. Like I, cause I see it as theatrical. I mean, like, like I, it's kind of like a Shakespearean tale. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of how I look at this. I mean, you literally have like families, riches, cousins, lovers. Like it's a very like old kind of theatrical play made into a movie about like betrayal and murder and all this shit. And it's like, I think I don't know. I I, I think I I don't think. Uh, I mean, it's okay not to like the movie. That's fine. But I don't agree with your with your view of him murdering people being like a reason for the movie to be bad. Does that make sense? Or like I don't know. I don't know how to. No, I don't think that's why the, the movie's bad. I think the movie's bad because it doesn't make sense. Like, because again, unless you're saying. Well, it's about how I again eat the rich. Like it's it's just about we got we got to kill all the rich people to solve problems. But it's like, well, then aren't y'all evil too for for murder? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, like I, but like, yeah, I guess it just takes into account of like what do you consider a level of evil you know what i mean it's like is is ignorance and negligence like the whole elspeth and angela thing i think that's in a comparison like did they not murder her by not caring about her and just just sending her when knowing that she has a mental disability knowing that she has issues and yet being like oh no you'll be fine dear go off go off and then it, when she it wasn't morally right but is do they have a legal Oliver obligation? Did? But does Oliver have a so, legal? So, so then Oliver, but Oliver was the one that influenced, right? Oliver was the reason why they even put her out in the first place. Kind of, a little bit. So it's, he's the, so, he's the one who noticed the patterns of what they were doing and, and then enforced so it So if you're standing more. near the edge of a cliff and someone just gives you that little push and then you fall off, it doesn't, think, it's not the ledge's fault that I you think died. I think in it's, this, no, 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 no. See, I don't think that's a fair comparison. I think in this situation, it would be more of like someone watching someone about to fall, right? And they like want to push them. And then the third person, which again, I'm not saying this is right. I'm just saying that this is what the movie's doing that's different from what you're saying. Is that if the third person went, you could push him. And then the second person pushes him. That's what this movie's doing. You know what I mean? It's not It's not literally the second person pushing a person off the cliff. It's a third spectator noticing what's happening and going, well, you could. And then they go, I could. 
and then push, you know, like, and it's like, it's, it's like this, cause that's literally my first note. I don't, I haven't gone any throw. We haven't gone over any notes, which I'm not even going to bother at this point. But my first note is he's a spectator. Cause it's what I noticed in this movie. He doesn't belong. He's literally the spectator of this college, of this family, of being like posh and rich. And by doing that, he has like a third person perspective where he's able to influence people by being the spectator. He's like he's like a Twitch chat watcher influencing the person playing the game, but having no connection to them. You know what I mean? Like it's it's mm -hmm. it's an interesting connection and facet of of like but i don't know i again like i don't i don't think it's a perfect movie also the um, scene where him his sister and i guess their cousin were all out naked in the field together that was just fucking weird why are siblings naked together Sibling they weren't doing weird. anything they're they're meters apart from each other sunbathing it doesn't matter man it doesn't, it doesn't. wild what? no but <laughs> Dude, listen. Uh, oh, him uh, drinking the bathwater too. I was like, this oh, guy. Oh, that's insane. That's fucking that... nuts. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's where it makes you question. It's like, what's his motive? Because clearly he like, clearly there's passion behind it. But you know also, what's the other motive? It's strange. It, strange. I. Well, I was gonna say like, again, I at times felt like they made him seem like crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, because. Yeah. The, but again, then it's like, okay, so just crazy people are evil <laughs> murderers. No, that's not, I don't think that's fair because it's like, this is a movie about a specific person. So why are you projecting it onto everyone? That's like watching Dahmer's monster and then going, oh, all autistic blonde people are murderers. Like, no, that's about a specific person. Like, why are you connecting it to everyone that exists? Because this, the only reason why I'm, I'm connecting it broader is because if this is supposed to be a statement because it feels like a statement piece it doesn't feel like it's a story about yeah. a specific person that's where i'm like okay then what is the statement because if what i'm taking from this is that the it's it's like the the fox in the hen house like once they're in there there's nothing you can do about it again you didn't portray the the rich family to be more evil than the person going in and eliminating them then i have to look and say okay so so if this is a message a statement is isn't there that, like isn't that inherently the morality like that's inherently the moral question of the fox in the hen house right you shouldn't automatically go yeah the fox should murder all the hens no you should go like well like like the the question should be why what is happening? Like, because again, I'm not saying Oliver did the right thing, but by saying that you don't like the movie because he did this, I feel like you're failing to understand what the movie's like doing because that's not, it's just his character doing Because I, I don't know. I, it's kind of hard for me to convey what I mean, I guess. But I just, I, I don't see it because what I see his character representing as like, do anything you can to take to take and be I mean, because it's all it's self-narcissistic he's he sleeps with everyone like that is a big thing of narcissism but i think he's right? obsessed like, it's obsession right i mean he literally fucks the guy's grave you know like it's it's not he's not again, meant to be another thing where it's like he's not meant is, to be you you know what i mean he's not meant to be the normal person this this is a main character that is not you're not meant to relate to this is a guy obsessed with pa like like passion and riches and like, uh, you know, like he doesn't understand what- I forgot about the fucking the grave thing. That again, a yeah. more reason where I was just like, why? Again, I, I was just like, he's evil. Like that's some evil fucking shit to do. But I don't get why you think that the movie can't be about that. Again, like if you have a movie about a so character it's about who, being evil? Well, not that you should be, but again, we had a whole conversation about just because a movie conveys an idea doesn't mean that they're saying it's a good thing. It's just conveying the idea of obsession. It's conveying the idea of this, like that passion. It's not a good thing, but you can make a movie about it and still have that thr the the feeling you're having is what they wanted you to have you're not supposed you're supposed to be like 
Ugh. Ugh. I don't like this guy. I don't like that. That's kind of the point. You're not supposed to enjoy what he's doing. You're not supposed to watch him fucking a grave and going, oh, this is beautiful. No, you're supposed to be like, oh God, oh God. Like, you're supposed to hate it because he's terrible. But if I'm supposed to hate it, what am I supposed to like about the movie? It's because like it, the entire thing is just made to be like, well, what do you like about like Saul? Is anything good about that? movie? He's got a purpose. What? What? What is good okay, about so what, what's positive? So he he was on his death. Uh, I'm not saying it's positive, but I'm saying it has a message I can at least understand. He was on his deathbed. He was told he only had so much so long to live. He was upset uh, the way that he was treated by big the insurance company like he, yeah because they denied coverage that could so, save his life yeah all the traps and well, murdering and torturing people makes and that it's always to people okay. who are genuinely evil in some way but you don't see like that, these rich people thing. he doesn't kill the innocent people and they go out of their way to show like oh this guy was again like a guy was a big big shot at an insurance firm that was pushing them so, to so what did anyone do wrong in joker did you like the joker movie i did like the Joker. what movies. did anyone do wrong in the joker movie realistically to the joke to his character that normal people don't do in everyday life what did, did they he do get wrong jumped on the subway by a couple kids i'm saying he shot he shot a fucking talk show host in the head at the end of the I didn't movie. say he was correct for it, but he's also. But that's what I'm saying. Like, like the nobody is. is the, like, it's, it's, yes, that's what I'm saying. Is that that's like why is that different? Is the Joker? But again, because I think this movie is trying to have a a message that is like a commentary on the rich and the poor. Like it so, feels but that's like what Joker was class. doing. Joker was trying to make a commentary on like medicine and like how we treat the mentally ill and things like that. And it's like, so are we saying that all mentally ill people shoot talk show hosts? No, of course not. We're not saying that, but we're saying that like in this dramatized version of that story, when you convey it that way, it makes the point that when things go unchecked, this is what can happen. Do you know what I'm saying? I okay, I understand that. Uh, but again, at least the Joker has a backstory that explains why the Joker is who the Joker is. There's a ton I, of comic yeah. books that give you context as to to why he becomes the way he becomes. But again, I, I think the other part of it was was pacing. I, I didn't find I I again, I don't know if I just didn't understand the maybe social differences and how people interact. But I, I I didn't know. Pretty early on, I was like, there's something wrong with this guy. And then especially when he had started flirting with the sister, I was just like, he's 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 in there to sabotage in some way. Like mm. he's self And then out of nowhere, he's just like to the mother. Oh, that was the other big portion that I was like, no, this is just fucking dumb. So not this first part, but before I forget it, he's also like, you're so fucking hot to the mom. And I was just like, all right, all right. I guess I guess he's just going to go at it at all angles. But the way that they react to their son's death, I was like, I just don't under I, I don't buy this. This doesn't make sense to me. Uh, see, like I, I like, yeah, like that. I that's that for me, that's the point. You know what I mean? Like that. That's kind of they just the whole movie is kind of made to make it clear that they do not they avoid all emotion anything that's ever brought towards them they don't they don't make a point to talk about so i love that scene where the sun has to be carted across the window and duncan can't close the blinds and farley's I, I like crying and screaming in the movie because oh, i was like this man is, just doesn't make sense it's so good yeah no well but it doesn't make sense because you would cry about your son like of course you would we all would we would all cry about our son's death of course but the point is that these are awful people who would rather avoid all emotional connection to this event at all and just move on and it just be inhuman because that's what they do to be rich 
you know, like that, they just move on. They say, hey, who are you? carry on. It doesn't matter. And that scene is such a, I, I love it because like, yeah, I think it's a great kind of amplification of, uh, of how they all, <laughs> uh, feel, you know, it's like, cause Farley is clearly like upset and is just trying to tell them like, why the fuck aren't we doing anything other than avoiding this? The daughter is just drinking herself to fucking oblivion. She's just literally pouring the glass. Like that's like, again, I admit it does become almost like obscure. Like it's, it's like she's literally pouring the wine and she's so like distraught that it's just, just pouring over. She's just watching it. Like it, it almost becomes like abstract comedy at that point. You know what I mean? Uh, but I don't think it's too out of place to be like, well, that's insane. You know, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I get where you're coming from, but I disagree. <laughs> and then in the end, he, he just, he wins. He gets what he wants. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, cause even Henry tries to stop him. The dad, like literally at one point, the dad realizes yep. what's happening and he knows what's been happening the whole time. And he's just like, how much, what do you want? How much do you want to get the fuck out of here? You know, like it doesn't matter. Yep. And it all falls back on money. And that's when Oliver's just like, uh, all right. So we want to give our final ratings, Mitchell. You want to give our final yes. ratings? All right. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm still at about a seven. It's leaning towards an eight. I do like this one a lot. I think it's beautifully shot, acted. Uh, there's a, there's, there's a good, there's a good amount of, swinging dicks i enjoy and it's a great movie it's a great movie it was there was seven quite a lot of helicopter action going on hell yeah hard to look away <laughs> just like that lethal company game mm -hmm. i'm looking at his penis i know that's what you were thinking the whole time you were watching this movie you were like <laughs> i'm looking at his penis <laughs> so it's funny because i like part of me wants to give it at least a two out of ten because you, you did explain things that I understand. You don't have to. But I think if I'm going based on like, I just didn't enjoy watching the movie again the whole time. It just it took so long, and then again, and maybe it was because I was pretty much guessing things decently before they happened. Because once it was clear that he became on on pushing people out, and he was making comments to the mother, I was like. I bet he's going to try to kill this whole family. I think that's one of my notes. Like <laughs> at one point where it's like, yeah, I think he's going to do something to the family. <laughs> and I, I, I don't, and I don't know if it's just my bad guy senses were tingling, but I, I think again, if they gave him more of a reason other than just now, nah, they, I can see they that. are that's a couple complacent points for me. and they deserve it. Yeah. I agree. I I find it very one. so you're keeping it at a one. Yeah. I I find it interesting though that because hear me out. I find it interesting that those type of story things you don't like or connect with because I feel like anime is literally the opposite of that. Like it's literally like because for example, Dagashi Kashi. Are we? Do we even have time to talk mm. about? It's almost eleven thirty at night. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, this is a segue into the Dakashi Kashi conversation. Um, Perfect placement. Yeah, we'll talk about it a little bit at least. Uh, what I think is interesting that you don't like, like you're saying like, oh, I can kind of tell what's going to happen. You know, like, oh, I can maybe piece together this or that. Meanwhile, anime tells you everything that's happening and everything that will happen in the next 10 minutes no matter what it is, and you never have to guess. <laughs> and it's fascinating that you love that, but you hate it when a movie implies things, but doesn't say it, but you can guess it. But when you guess it correctly, you're like, wow, this movie, why the fuck did it even try? Well, because I think it felt like it was trying to have this like grandiose twist to it. And mm. again, it 
it, it's I, poised as I, I think like a thriller drama is what my guess is. Yeah, it, there what definitely wasn't a twist. I would never by any means say this movie has a twist. Um, the only twist it might have is that the main character isn't had been plotting the entire time. Exactly. Is it, is it because that that did get me? I thought my first time watching that movie, like this movie, Saltburn. I thought that he didn't start planning all this until like halfway through. So when the twist became that he had originally like thumbtacked his tire and did all of these things, to get, that actually did surprise me um, because I only thought it went a certain distance before he started planning it. Um, so yeah, that, that got And me, also, but... I, it wasn't like I was like, oh, all these moments that happened, like even pain at the bar, like I didn't guess that that was going to happen. But I very well early on did not trust and, any of his intentions. And it feeds on... Again, like, I think uh, uh, the final statement I'll make about this movie, and we'll go on to Dakashi Kashi for a little bit. Um, I think what that the statements that that's trying to make that does well is it's again, it's how the rich view the, the lower class or poor. It's like Felix kind of expected Oliver to give him his bike, you know, like even though he did not right say it. There is a moment where Felix goes like he looks at him and goes, it is all the way across city and kind of looks at him and then looks at his bike and then looks down and, and so there's almost the implication that it's like he expects this kid to just give him his bike to go ride which oliver does but he planned on it and then later yep. oliver plays on the fact of like oh i'm poor i i can't afford and of course the rich felix oh don't worry about it, bro. I'm fucking rich. I got you. Don't... So he's almost kind of playing on the fact that these rich people want to seem like they're giving and friendly, but really they're just manipulating poor people. So he's almost manipulating rich people by using the things that rich people manipulate poor people by doing, <laughs> you know? Although I will say, I felt like Felix was actually a lot more sincere. I mean, even when he was talk when he was talking to people about Oliver without Oliver around, he was always defending Oliver. Yeah, that's a thing that they do well, which again, I think is supposed to make the movie, I, I think that's supposed to make you feel sympathetic for Felix more to make you realize that Oliver's character isn't 100% in the right. Because it's like to what you're saying, if you made Felix a fucking asshole, then it just becomes a slasher movie where Oliver's the 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 killer and he's taking out all the assholes by creating a bit, a bit of nuance where it's like, well, no, Felix is a good guy. You now have to look into it deeper where it's like, well, is Felix a good guy? Well, yeah, he's nice to Oliver, but is he nice to Farley? Is he nice to his tenants like they make or like his helpers, the the foot, the groundskeepers? The footmen, like they, yeah. Yeah, they make a point like he doesn't know any of their names. He doesn't know any of their placements or anything like that. So it's like, eh, it's so yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but we already gave our ratings. We're going to move. Yep. Pa we're moving past Saltburn. Dakashi Kashi. Uh, all right, it's my turn. It's losing yep. me, man. It's losing me. <laughs> I got two episodes Bro, I left. Watched... All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, watching, watching the beginning of episode six. <laughs> and like i was like oh okay the 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 candy and all that the the rope and stuff but then toe uses like the hand thing to like i guess lift up uh saya's skirt so that yeah way they don't Coconuts really make it see. clear like, what he's doing right because it's like is he slapping her ass or is he lifting her skirt i, I they don't think make i it think clear. it was he was trying to get so that way coconuts could see her panties um yeah they're losing like, me no, so this, that, this escalated so quickly because that episode was entirely about games, right? Where it was yes. like, yeah. what games can we play with? Which I don't mind. I don't mind themed ideas for TV shows, right? Where it's like, oh, this episode's about the games and this episode's mm -hmm. about whatever. That's fine. But yeah it was weirdly sexualized it's getting more sexualized as the show goes on it is i i noticed that i was like this this got progressively progressively getting hornier more mature and what i don't like is and that I, I will say the first episode i think you were like yeah you know kids watching this and that's why i was like i don't know if tyler i don't think kids are watching this 
And the hornier it gets, the younger they're getting. I don't like that. All right. Because they, there was like the doctor scene. Because, all right, first oh. off, I had to Google it. They're 15 in in the show. Like in, 15? In the show. Jesus. In the normal show. Yes, they are 15 to 16 years oh old. Oh, God. So that means that in that doctor scene, they were like, what, 10? 9? Yeah, maybe 10 or 11. And like, I yes, it's, I like, it, it's funny because I like the joke of coconuts just oh, not be getting just it. like oh just yeah. take this take, take this more and she's just like i she's think there's something me. else wrong with me examine me yeah and he's like nope here you go like that's funny but when you imagine an eight-year-old girl begging to be examined by an eight-year-old boy and a 40 year old I, yeah. man drawing it it starts making me feel uncomfortable a little bit okay it starts yep. making me feel a little uncomfortable so we're going to ignore that they're 15 and they're... I'm going to pretend they're college students. That's what I'm pretending. That, that's easier. Yep. I, it makes me feel better about the show. Okay? Yep. But even then... It's like... They, I Like, what is the show about? It's losing me entirely. Like, like, there's been like four episodes in a row that are just completely like filler nonsense. And there's only 12 episodes in this season. So I'm like, what? Because like... Okay. You know what episode I did like, but again, had nothing to do with anything in the show? Was the, the kind of horror episode where it starts off with the scary oh, stories. Oh, telling stories. Yeah. I liked that, but it made me wish that I was watching a scary anime. I was like, I almost, I wish I was watching a different show. <laughs> I wish I was watching this which show. Which there are really good scary animes. Which I'm, I'm down to get into. Because yeah, I was like, I would rather okay. be watching this than what than going back to the the normal show now because like you're not doing anything like because no it was like doing okay anything. it was like 60 percent of we're gonna teach you about some kind of snack it yeah. was like like 15 to 20 ish percent of you know him not wanting to do what his dad wants him to do and and the hijinks him and his dad got into and then it was like a sliver of like oh, we're a little promiscuous and now it's like we're really really laying it on thick no the actually the only good episode of the last like four or five that i've watched is the carnival episode where they work yes at the festival because it actually has character development like seiya yep. and coconuts go on like a little bit of a date the dad kind of lets the son go to do his own thing and then um yep toe comes in and he's really yep. good at making the food and like, he's having fun doing it and the dad realizes like oh like he's he's really good at this so it almost makes me realize oh are they setting up like his toe gonna take over for so I, i'm not i'm not trying to make assumptions but at least mm -hmm. that episode made me go okay they're setting up characters to do bigger things you know and but what's funny is that that's the part I'm talking about earlier where I mentioned like how they set up everything that characters are feeling in the moment that they're feeling them. You never yep. meant to guess is because the whole time they're on that date, uh, Saya, Saya is mm. just like, I'm having the best time in the world. This is the greatest day of my life. I'm having such a good time. He's doing this. <laughs> oh my God. This is the best. Like you're never meant to have any like implication of what's happening. Yeah, She'll it's very, you. very clear. And if you weren't <laughs> sure, they'll repeat it a few times, use a few different syn synonyms, really get that point across. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, that episode was great. I and Hotaro wasn't even in that episode much. Now no. Now that I think about it. I, I, this, I totally forgot. This anime is like utilizing one of all the different tropes, right? You have the... So there's, there's kind of like the... There's the, the pool trope that it's usually either a pool or, or beach where people are in bikinis. There is the the fair, the carnival trope. It it definitely uses a little bit of all like the, the main ones. But I, I think you can kind of that. tell like there are certain episodes where it's like, was it filler? And you guys are just like, well, fill her up. Like we're going to make it as a sexualized episode. And then when we get back to story, it's like, okay, oh. here's the actual story. Like there was a whole episode about poop and boobs. The whole episode 
was about poop and yep. boobs. That might have been the horror episode, now that I think about it, because I think it starts I think off, it was the second half of it, yeah. Yeah, the, the first, like, five to ten minutes are, like, this horror-themed, like, oh, they're telling scary stories. And then the second half is just Hotaro telling Saya to, like, eat this poop candy. And she's like, it's a poop party. And she's like, don't say that. It's poo isn't funny and that's you need to be classy yep. and then coconuts shows up and she's like do you like boobs and he's like what boobs no she can't mean that and then she, he's like oh well i don't i think guys who are into boobs are kind of that fucking, was like okay, that was that kind is of funny, funny. That. yeah he's like they're immature and she's like and then she's like i thought you were different to watch yeah. that he's like what no i love boobs yeah like that's just <laughs> that that is funny but it's just like what is that? like i wish that that was a smaller moment in an episode yep. that had more going on instead of an entire episode about a poop and boob joke and it's almost like a joke inherently about the miscommunication of japanese and english language like i don't even know i, I don't i don't know because oh we had one moment of english we like american insight oh speaking no, not even speaking. It was like insight into what Japanese oh. people think about Americans. Because when they're at the Ooh. carnival, remember, he's like, oh, look, we have some American oh, food. Oh, the candied apples. I was so Christmas? confused by that. I was like, I've never had a candy apple for Christmas. Like, I was I, like, that's like Halloween. Like, I can kind of... I kind of understand candy apples being around Chris. Like, I guess more people make them around Christmas, maybe because it's a fall winter food. Apples. It's not too hot where it's going to melt the caramel. on Yeah. It and that's when outside. apples are. Yeah. Orchards, uh, the fall. But, but to say that it's a, it was a holiday food. Like for staple. Amer I was like, what? And then he's I've like, I've never had a candy apple. On he's Christmas. like, do Americans think we're weird for eating these at carnivals? And I was like, no, we eat them. At, that's we mainly, eat them at carnivals. That's yeah. mainly where we eat them. Like what? That's such, it's crazy how that's what they think an American staple is. Like they think that we eat KFC on Christmas. I, that's just the thing. I'm not even, I'm not trying to make this up or make a generalized statement. They have literally like, corporatized like kfc sells japanese people during december family dinners family <laughs> dinners family dinners based around christmas like isn't that crazy <laughs> it's like it's such an american thing the red white it's Apple christmas is. um but yeah no and speaking of which the candy thing the candy thing is getting a little intense. Every episode, it's like really starting to sell me on more and more candies that I've never heard of. <laughs> and that's fine. Dude, some but of these like, candies sound fucking delicious. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, they sound great. But can I have a show? Can I watch a show? Like, can you? <laughs> like, at a certain point, I'm like, oh, yeah, these candies sound great and all. But can I watch a television show about characters? Sorry, I got two episodes nope. left. Um... I'm going to watch these episodes and see if hopefully it rounds off into some kind of like story thing that keeps me hooked. But I feel it's like losing that second me. season is getting farther and farther away. It's losing me, man. It started at like a seven or eight and it's it's like dipped to like a five or six. But I'm still hopeful because there's there's moments of like, oh, this is I like this, you know, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I know what the first horror one that comes to mind that I think you'd really enjoy it's Parasite mm, I think I would like that one the one with the hand thing right yep yeah I've seen you watching it before that did look enjoyable I like the sarcasm yep. of the the hand he's, he's got good sarcasm he does and I, I think it is it is very minimal on the boobage oh thank god even though I love <laughs> boobies I am a boob guy uh I amen brother if it's if that's a thing that I don't since I am a boob guy I'm hyper aware of when shows and movies are trying to take advantage of that yeah oh you know what yeah. I mean yeah that's the thing it's like I am aware I am but you're not allowed to take advantage of that okay <laughs> let me be me let me be me make a movie right and then if the person in that movie happens to have nice boobaloobies I'll notice it. 
You don't have to focus on the boobaloobies. Like that's the the main the main shot of that's the scene not... for like seven seconds. Uh, well, that's porn. That's fine. But that's that's. <laughs> All right, it's your There's turn. Time to, and a place. It's your turn to suggest a movie, or show, okay. or media. It's your turn to suggest media for next week. I'm not gonna lie. I really wanted to find something really awful, dude. To make I you didn't watch. think you were gonna hate this. This I thought maybe this might connect with you a little bit. I didn't know. I didn't think you'd hate it that much. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I decided. I've never heard of it. Oh. No, I. <laughs> We're watching Soul Plane. I feel like you've seen Soul Plane, though. Not, not recent enough to to like. I, I'm confusing it with Airplane. So like almost every scene I'm trying to think of, I think mm -hmm. I'm thinking of Airplane. So I've never seen I, Airplane. Well, maybe we'll do a back to back soul plane airplane, baby. <laughs> this is the plane month. It's the plane episodes. Hell yeah. Uh, maybe we can only talk about planes in our next like literal pl like like what the, the intricacies of a Boeing 747. I thought the you next meant widespread meadows. Ooh, planes. Ooh. There's all oh, we got options. All right. Or so yogurt. if you don't want if you don't want to be spoiled for Soul Plane, make sure to watch that before our next episode and do it because we will. Yeah. Make sure to join that discord. Join our uh, Reddit Neon Valley mm. pod. Uh, if you want to support us, join that Patreon. We release the episodes a little bit early as well as give you a little extra Bits when we're able to. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got for you. All right. Love you guys. See you in the next episode. Keep it real. This might be the most heated we ever got in an episode. That was. That was really heated. <laughs>